Hi everybody, we come now to one of the most glorious chapters in the letter to the Romans. In fact, one of the most inspirational pieces of writing that uh, you'd ever come across really. Chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. We're going to look a little bit during this chapter at how the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God works in our world. It is a glorious piece of writing. It's poignant. It's all-encompassing. And you'll find it, I, mean, I know as you study it, uh, very, very helpful for our sense of our connectedness to God. We're going to divide this uh, into three sections. Verses 1 to 13, which will talk a bit about life and the Spirit. It's a, all a gift of God's love. Then verses 14 to 30, life of the Spirit in the daily challenges of life. And finally, verses 31 to 39, an extraordinary hymn to God's love. So, the first section now, Romans 8, verses 1 to 13. Life of the Spirit, a gift of God's love for you and for me. So, let's take a little bit of a look at the first four verses again, just to refresh ourselves on these. Paul answers the agonizing debate that chapter 7 we've lived through about the law and how it le leads to that rather despairing question, who's going to rescue me from this way of living? We've seen how the law is something external to us and that it can't deal with the deep-seated problems within human nature that sin sort of exacerbates. Our motivations, our actions are all tied up with the flesh, the weakness, the sin in us. A little bit like being the slave of an addiction. We're powerless to do anything, much as we'd like to. Paul's answer is quite extraordinary. And these four verses have been the source of a lot of prayers, especially in the Protestant tradition, and some hymns, and a cantata by Johann Sebastian. In verse 3, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering. And right there in the flesh, he condemned sin. God sent his own son. Isn't that a very poignant and love-filled expression? As we think, God sending his own son. Why? To enter our human situation from within. To grasp our deep-seated problems and our difficult situation our, our entrapment, in a sense, to dwell with us in our sinfulness. And very much like a Jewish sin offering, which was offered for all those who committed sins either unwittingly or unwillingly. If you've ever seen the uh, movie Gran Torino, a little bit like the hero in that, he took upon himself all the stupidity and the violence of a whole lifestyle scenario of these street battles and all of that in order to diffuse it and to show it up for what it really is. And that's what Jesus has done. Right there in the flesh, he condemned it. And why is this? in order that the righteous requirement of the law 
might be fulfilled in us, us who walk now in the Spirit. It's God's Spirit that we now possess who enables us, who frees us to fulfill the law. Something we couldn't do before, but now we're transformed from the inside. We can see things more differently and we're much freer to respond because God's Spirit is within. Now we come to verses 5 to 11. In these verses, we contrast two different mindsets or two different lifestyle choices set before us. A little bit like in the book of Deuteronomy, how the author there places before us either life or death. We have to choose which path to follow. The Spirit is the indwelling presence of God. Just as in former times God dwells in the temple. Now God's Spirit works in the hearts and lives in the hearts of believers. And God's Spirit generates a new life within us. Father Brendan Byrne notes that Paul has three allusions to the indwelling of the Spirit which match the three allusions or references to the indwelling of sin in chapter 7, our former life. And so we have the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 33. I will write my law in their hearts, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. That's true for us now, because we have God's Spirit. We move to verses 12 and 13, with, beginning with, So then, my brothers and sisters, so then, indicates a very, very important conclusion. It's the choice, the lifestyle choice we make between life and death. If you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if in the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And isn't it lovely, that expression, my brothers and sisters. It's, uh, it's Paul engaging us all into this... Uh, strong conclusion he's just made. Now we're going to move into the second section verses 14 to 30. Life of the Spirit in the daily challenges of life. And in a sense we're going to tap once again into the hope that we have. Now that we've been uh, baptized and we've uh, left aside sinfulness and we're now alive to the Spirit, living in the Spirit. We're going to see how that hope is part and parcel of what we have in our day-to-day -day struggles. And all the different challenges, all the different sufferings that come our way, we have every reason to be still hopeful people. And if we could remember now, too, those beautiful words of a few chapters back, Romans 5, verse 5, much beloved this verse of the great Saint Augustine, the hope we have will not